So now, this is the fourth one, the last one. It's on loss of faith and decrease of trust in higher source during the corona pandemic. The last ones are the frustrating parts. Just to remind you, um, we analyzed the data in the different phases of the pandemic. We have 4,800 and so whatsoever persons. Now we have also data from the fifth wave, but they're not included in the study. Only on the last slide you will see data of the fifth phase included. Um, we relied on a conceptual model of connective or relational spirituality. Let's say we are the center of the world. Of course, we are related to the others. We are related to nature. Please remember the colors from uh, number two. And um, we try to find meaning in our life. And we try to find um, some transcendent resource which may be helpful. Either we call it God, whatever it is, or it's called the numinous, or prajna, whatever. So what about faith as a stronghold in difficult times? 41% in the whole group said, yes, I have faith. It's not bad. 28% are indifferent. It means they're not saying yes. And 31% said no. It means only 41% have this faith as a resource to cope. There were no gender related differences. In trend, the few who said, I'm from the, diverse, the group of diverse people, there are some lower scores. People living in, as singles had the same scores as those living in, in other contexts. There was a significant difference for age. Faith as a stronghold was lowest in the younger ones, of course, and was highest in the elderly, because the socialization is different in the different groups. So now, faith as a hold favors positive perceptions. You know um, the different um, factors from lecture two. Nature, silence, and, and contemplation was highest, of course, in those who say, I have some faith to rely on. It was, of course, very high in those who said, um, I've perceived changes in terms of spirituality. Those who don't care about this stuff, of course, had the lowest scores here. Relationships are important for all, but there's a significant favor for those who said, I have high faith. Reflection of life was highest in those with faith and lowest in those who said, I don't have this resource. Digital media usage was um, quite similar and restrictions were perceived surprisingly less severe in those who said, I have faith as a resource to cope. So faith that provides hold in life could be, let's say, a sensitizer to be more aware of your own resources. It buffers not necessarily against the social restrictions, of course, but how you perceive it. So now, the different phases of the pandemic. We have analyzed phase as hold. The number of or the percentage of persons said, I have this phase as a stronghold. We differentiated Catholics, Protestants, and those who said, I have no religious affiliation, but I have some faith in whatever it is. You see, there are quite high, but too high numbers during the first phase. Again, with the second lockdown, there was a strong decline of people who said, I've lost my face. Where's my face in this hope? This was also true for those that have no religious affiliation. Um, during the summer of 21, there's a slight increase in the Protestant group, which is declining. You can draw a regression line. It's slightly increasing. And the Catholics, it's slightly increasing too, and the other groups too. The religious trust is declining significantly in those both large cohorts of Protestants and Catholics, and also among those who do not belong to a specific religious group, but still have faith. Also, the frequency of praying is declining. You see on the right bar, green means daily praying. It's clearly declining. And the group who is not praying is 
strongly increasing. And it's stable during all the different phases of the pandemic, starting with the second lockdown. So many apparently have lost their face due to the pandemic. Many of them felt lonely and socially isolated and had a depressive mood state. There is a clear interconnection. Loss of face is a red line. Again, you see with the second lockdown, the percentage of those who said, I've lost my face because of the pandemic is increasing up to above 20%. You could say, oh, 20% compared to 100 is not too much. But um, imagine you have the room full of people and 20 of them have said, I've lost it. What's my resource? What would you do with those 20 person from 100? You have to care for them. This is the point. And what about trust in the higher source? It's a blue line. You see, it remained quite stable in the first phase of the pandemic. And then with the second lockdown, it's strongly decreasing. And it's on a very low level starting to increase. Daily prayers have shown you were decreasing strongly. So the expectation that faith is a resource as was published and by several um, people also here from the conference teams may have been correct only in the first phase. If you don't care for the different phases of the pandemic, your picture is wrong or not true. Or it could be very different to be precise. So faith was apparently shaken in the later phases. Again, let's say it's hope fatigue. The vertical relation is also strained. People were in social disconnection with the others because they were in lockdowns. It means this vertical direction, turn it around, horizontal and vertical, all these relations seem to have been broken or at least shaken. So let's try to rely to the model you already know. The um, search for transcendence is depicted as blue, trust in higher source. It's an um, example for the search and transcendence. The relation to others is the motive of loneliness and social isolation. What are the interconnections? First, you see that loneliness and socially isolated is strongly related, of course, to the lack of social contacts. And trust in higher source has only marginally um, is only marginally related to this um, resource, which means it's not of relevance. Support through local religious community, it's a weak association for both. When you consider the existential issues, for example, consider meaning in life, you see those who have trust in higher source consider meaning in life. There's a moderate association. Those who feel lonely, there's a marginal negative association. Care for what is really important in life is rather a topic for those who say I have trust in higher resource. What about nature? More intensive perception of nature is related to trust in higher resource, but not relevantly to feelings of loneliness and so on. Praying, of course, is highly related to trust in higher source and only marginally negative to loneliness. So social isolation is weakly associated with low satisfaction with local church support and weakly positively with loss of faith. The associations with existential issues, nature and religious trust are marginally negative only. Trust in higher source as indicated for this resource of, of transcendence is moderately related to meaning in life, perception of nature, and weakly with support by local religious community and marginally only negative with social relations. So the more private issues are related. What is it with the local religious community? In the sample, 64% uh, were Christians. 32% said, I have no religious affiliation. Satisfaction with the support from the local religious community was positively responded by 23%, only 23% as something positive. 50% were indifferent, it means they didn't say yes. And 24 said, I'm not satisfied with it. I'm unhappy with my church. It's a clear statement. The satisfaction was lower in persons with low well-being, of course. Those who felt lonely or left alone, as usually men and younger persons. 
the point is how can we reach these persons who are more in the situation that they need help or support and who should do it should we call the pastor could be an idea but the representatives of the church have become speechless by themselves churches were closed or had reduced worship services only in the first and the mid phases too even now we have some problems with the services this is where maybe where the the question comes into play god what have you done why did you help the same is true for the war in ukraine the same situation not the same it's it's different of course but um the pattern could be very similar all the richest communities were in the lockdown important integrative and meaningful functions of religion communal forms of religious practices were restricted particularly the older ones um, they're relying on these resources now they're gone many people stayed at home afterwards and far fewer came back later on to the church many were disappointed that there were no relevant answers and little encouragement from the church representatives but the picture could be different um, when you're looking at small religious communities with high cohesion i made some analyses with friends from the seventh day adventists they are a very small um, community in germany look at the comparisons 31,000 members in Germany as compared to 20 million Protestants in Germany. They have a high congregational cohesion among the parish members. Their psychological well-being and also their spiritual well-being remain stable during the pandemic, not as you've seen in the population we've analyzed so far. They felt quite well supported by the community, which is also part of the story that they're starting very early to be digitally connected with the members. They were communicating with them. They had all the strategies to deal with those who may have have some questions or felt left alone. They were in contact. Yes, before. So phases of spiritual dryness, it's a form of spiritual crisis related to God, were perceived by 40% often or even regularly. And this is the same percentage prior to the pandemic. So it means the pandemic has not triggered more perception of spiritual dryness and not more feelings that God is distant or non-responding to prayers than before the pandemic in this group. So the situation is different for this small group. But nevertheless, within the group, there's a problem. 37% um, were all the time full of hope for the return of Jesus. This is one of the core fundamentals of their belief system. And 28, at least most of the time. 72% uh, have a deep longing for God. But nevertheless, 33% fear the future. 24% uh, do not fear the future. And 43% uh, were undecided. It means they were hoping for the return of Jesus, but they fear the future. Wow, what's this? Now look at the details. Um, we have um, pastors persons with leading role in the church, persons with other duties in the church, and persons without duty in the church. As you can see here in the correlation map, there's an association, pastors and, and um, seven-day adventists with leading role show an association between hope for the return of Jesus and longing for God. They were not relatively associated with fear for the future, whereas this association was weakly to moderately positive, and the Adventists with other or new, no duties in the church, representing the normal congregational members. Fear the future is moderately positively related to longing for God in people without duties, and weakly in people without other duties, and no significant related to pastors and those with leading role in the church. So these different groups have different pattern, whether they fear the future, whether it's associated with the longing for God or Jesus, as the others. So the community members perceive differently as, let's say, the leaders of the church. The interpretations could be, for seven-day Adventists, this hope of Jesus coming should be a living concept, and thus one would expect a negative association. 
the expectation could be a matter of joy as an eschatological perspective and not fear. Yet the association is positive. The opposite of what should be expected. The hope for the return of Jesus might be rather a theoretical concept related to fear. For example, one may consider that Jesus' second coming is said to be a matter of final judgment where some are approved and others condemned. And this, this belief, thus this belief can be related to fear when one assumes that the own merits are not enough to be approved. And thus, they're expecting Jesus' coming, but it would be better when it is wherever it is, because it means it, it should, couldn't be that it's not a good story for the end. One may fear the concrete future, but one have, may have hope as a spiritual perspective. For normal community members, one may assume that the longing for God as a helping resource is meant to compensate their worldly fears and worries. This assumption would be supported by the finding that more intensive praying and meditation because of the pandemic was strongly related to fear for the future. Both in persons with leading duties and also the pastors, they all bring their fears before God during the prayers. Now, coming to some end, some general suggestions. The expertise of religious leaders was suggested by some scholars to be beneficial in managing the pandemic. However, many of them were in the lockdown, the spiritual lockdown themselves, and churches were closed during the first phase. Faith communities may nevertheless play an important role to support all who connect to them. We can of, of course ask who is this faith community, who is the church and so on. Yet many people seem to have lost the faith and satisfaction with the support by local religious communities. It was quite low in the sample. The charitable mandate of let's say the religious communities, again, who is it, should be underlined and make them proactively approach members and all who feel they are lost and left behind, the depressed and lonely ones even when at the first glance they seem to have lost their trust in God. To find theological sound pastoral practices and corresponding answers, caring and listening to persons in need seems to be the most appropriate. And I think you could agree we should try to avoid easy answers. Suffering is in the world and Jesus is on your side. When peace, uh, people don't feel it, they have a problem. In fact, when the, this answer is not meeting the experience of the affected persons. So what remains when phase runs dry? Now we have phase four with much more infections. Look at the details. Alcohol consumption happily is slightly decreasing. Sporting activities is still decreasing. Walking in nature is still decreasing. Praying was strongly decreasing, it's not improving in the fifth phase. Meditation is not really improving. The uptake of mood enhancing medication is slightly increasing. This means also during the fifth phase, with the more infectious but less dangerous Omicron variant, health related behaviors did not change to the better. So, what is left? Where is hope in the whole story? Thanks for listening. When you have some questions and comments, feel free to comment. We can wrap up all these four different perspectives on the same topic and discuss it. So the Adventist story, um, no, let's start differently. When we leave out the data from the Adventist, these suggestions, um, the general suggestions were the same. You know this one? Which one? Um, this one. Sorry, this one. So these general conclusions are true without the data from the Seventh Adventist. But there's a different perspective when we now add on the findings from the Seventh Day Adventists. It's a topic of fear, for example, which is not in, which was not investigated. Yes, we have the data on this topic, but it was more clear in the seven day adventist that the story is a little bit more complex particularly when we ask for expectations of jesus coming and this is another perspective jesus coming was not analyzed in the general population so this is only a, a different aspect and facet of the topic 
Yes. Yes. This is part of their spirituality, waiting that Jesus is really coming. It means the pandemic was set by some of them, not, not generally uh, recognized. We're already waiting for it. We already knew that things become... <laughs> Yes, yes. It's providing it. We are in the end times. Was set by some, not by all. <laughs>